Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Walking Through the Scriptures with Joseph Bahoda. Today, I want to talk to you about how false prophets and how false teachers are made, and in some cases, even groomed uh, to be false prophets and false teachers and false pastors and false apostles and such. They're not, they, they, they don't just happen in a vacuum. They're actually created and made. And I also, with that being said, I want to do a follow-up, too, to what uh, Pastor Fred Clement came up with um, a couple of months ago. He did a video talking about the next generation of prosperity preachers. And uh, I reached out to Pastor Fred, and we are actually going to collaborate on this in the future. He said I, I, I got a hold of him, and he, he contacted me, got a hold of me. So hopefully we'll be able to do something on this in the future so we can elaborate even more on these videos because when I saw that, when Pastor Fred from uh, By the Book Ministries, that's the name of his YouTube channel, uh, posted this, like something immediately in my spirit just rose up and I was like, wow, I saw the same exact thing. And so, Pastor Fred, if you're watching, praise God for you, sir. And I thank God for you because I saw the same thing. You know, I discerned the same thing and I was like, aha, somebody else is seeing the same thing I am. And I'm going to talk to you why. I saw that and why I, I'm very excited to do a collaboration with Pastor Fred on that so we can really talk about it more. With that being said, um, I, I recently just did a collaboration with Richard Henry from uh, Richard Monta YouTube channel. So Richard, thank you so much for uh, doing a collaboration with me. I look forward to doing more things with you in the future, sir. And in that video with Richard, I talked about how I used to be a prosperity gospel word of faith elder. Um, I actually pastored a church in Iraq. I, I'm a 20-year veteran, and I did four combat tours, three in Iraq and one in Afghanistan. And on my first tour, I actually got to pastor with the wonderful privilege of pastoring the gospel service in Iraq. However, unfortunately, I can honestly say um, I was pastoring as a word of faith, prosperity gospel pastor. Um, I was ordained as an elder in a word of faith church, in a word of faith ministry. Now, I say all that to say this, so that's my background, and like I said earlier, and like I said in, on Richard's program, um, false pastors and false teachers, false prophets, word of faith uh, preachers and um, prosperity gospel preachers, they're not just, they're not, they don't just happen out of a vacuum. They are made, uh, they are groomed to become who and what they are, and I shared on Richard's program how that happened to me. Um, now, granted, this was back in 2007, so I do not want to accuse uh, the, the people that said this to me as if that's their theology now, because it may not be. Okay, this was like 15 years ago. But 15 years ago, um, I, had a, I had a father in the faith, and he had a bishop, and then that bishop's uh, spiritual father was Creflo Dollar, and then his spiritual father was Kenneth Copeland. And as you know, Kenneth Copeland's spiritual fathers, if you will, were Kenneth Hagen Sr. and Oral Roberts, who are now both passed on. So that was my spiritual tree, if you will. And so, and this is where, if you want to have a chance to check out, and I, and I probably will post this in my description, I, I did a video years ago, how Word of Faith preachers, how they really twist the word covenant, and how they really, really mess it up. And this is how it was explained to me. In 2007, I went to a, a conference that my bishop was hosting, and in the middle of this conference, like it was on a Friday, it was like a three-day conference or whatever it was, and on a Friday night, he got the prophesying. He took the microphone, and he got the prophesying around the room. There was a couple hundred people there. So my bishop prophesied for about five minutes or so, and everybody got all excited in a frenzy, and then my spiritual father took the mic, and then he started prophesying and in a frenzy. And then I remember as they were prophesying and as they were, passif uh, as they were passing the microphone around, there was like this feeling in me that said, you know, I should go up there and take the mic too. Well, later on that night, when we got back to our hotel room, um, my father in the faith was like, Joe, you should have took the mic. And the reason you should have took the mic is so that way the people will know you and that, that way the people will kind of, you get your face before the people. So the people know who you are. Now, keep in mind, they ordained me as an elder, and I was pastoring the, the gospel service um, in Iraq. So when I came home for my two weeks of leave, um, I preached at my bishop's church. And 
they laid out the red carpet for me. Like it, it was very well known that I was the bishop's spiritual grandson. And so when I pulled in the parking lot, people were like, oh, that's, that's Brother Joe. That's, that's Bishop's spiritual grandson. And I was actually given an armor bearer. Like, you know, he carried my blazer suit, coat, and, you know, he carried my water. He carried my Bible. So when I preached for, for that church, like I was given the red carpet treatment. And, and, you know, and, you know, and I thank God, you know, he allowed me to preach at that church and so on and so forth. But it, my point is, it was very well known that I was the spiritual grandson of the bishop, and this line, if you will, was continuing to continuing to go through me. And so anyway, so he's like Joe. When we were in the hotel room after the after the service that night, he's like Joe. He's like, yeah, you should have took the mic. That way, people can people can know you, and they can know your face, and they can hear the words that come from you, and and we can get you, or you can get your face before the people. And then he said, you know, Joe, he said, you know how this covenant works. You know, now that you are, now that you're in covenant with us, you know, now that you're my spiritual son and you're in covenant, you know, with this ministry and this, and this covenant, he's like, you know, the anointing runs downhill and you know, as the anointing runs downhill, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and basically as it runs downhill. So, you know, Joe, like, and then he used Abraham as an example. So, you know how Abraham had a, had a son, Isaac. But then Isaac had two sons, you know, Jacob and Esau, and then Jacob had 12 sons. So it goes from one to two to 12. So, you know, Joe, since you're in covenant, you know, the, as, since you're in covenant, you know, the covenant gets bigger as generations go on. And at the time, Bishop had a church of about 1,200 people. So he's like, Joe, Bishop, you know, his church is like 1,200. And, you know, so since I'm his spiritual son and since, Joe, you know, the covenant gets bigger as it goes on. He's like, Joe, my church may be like 4,000. And with that being said, you know, Joe, your church may be like 8,000, Joe. So basically, if you just stay with us, Joe, you're going to be, you know, pastoring a church of 8,000 people, Joe. Saints, this is what was told to me way back in 2007. So my point is they were already kind of prepping me mentally and emotionally preparing me for this. They already, you know, did the red carpet treatment in front of me. People knew I was the bishop's spiritual grandson. And this this was kind of the mindset that, you know, we're preparing Joe, you know, for that thing. And then, then, then they never said they're preparing me, but you could just see that's where it was going. Um, it, you know, my father in the faith said, you know, I'm going to have a church eight that's, you know, that's pastoring 8,000 people. Because he said, you know, Joe, as the covenant goes on, the covenant gets bigger as you go along. That's how it was taught to me. Now, I say all that to say this. Um, and I thank God for Pastor Fred. And when he did, uh, again, by the book Ministries, he did a video on the next generation of prosperity preachers. And he did a video on Stephen Furtick and Michael Todd. And I can honestly say I saw the same thing, especially with Michael Todd. And I also saw it with Stephen Furtick, and I'll, and I'll explain why. A while back, Stephen Furtick was on the, the Elephant Room show, and there was a bunch, a whole bunch of pastors that got together. Um, Bishop T.D. Jakes was there. Craig Laurie was there, I believe. Matt Chandler was there. Stephen Furtick was there. Um, and anyway, they did basically... Um, God, I can't remember the guy. Mark Driscoll was there. Thank you. Mark Driscoll was there. And they did basically an interview type of style and, you know, they kind of debated each other and they went back and forth and so on and so forth. And I remember Stephen Verdick said his father in the faith was Craig Rochelle. Well, after that elephant room um, in which he was talking to T.D. Jakes and he got introduced to T.D. Jakes from the elephant room. Now, granted, they might have been friends way before this, but they met again in the elephant room. And then after that, I see now where T.D. Jakes is now preaching or teaching or doing an interview with Stephen Furtick at Elevation Church in Charlotte. And basically, Stephen Furtick is now saying T.D. Jakes is now his father in the faith. And that's another thing, saints, that you'll see in a lot of these prosperity gospel word of faith preachers. They'll, they'll move from father of the faith, father of the faith, or mother in the faith, to mother in the faith. As their ministry grows bigger, they will move to a new father and this is how they'll say it, because this is how it was taught to me. They're like, Joe, there may come a time when your ministry outgrows me. And when your ministry outgrows me, you may have to find another father in the faith that can basically take you to the next level that you may be going in God. Okay? 
So once you get to a certain point, once you get to a certain level, I may not be able to help you anymore. And you got to get to another person who can take you to where you're going. Now, there's nothing necessarily spiritual about that because what they're really saying is they're saying your father can only take you to a certain level as far as how many people you have in your church. So say if your bishop has like a church of 1,500 once you match 1500, he can be, you know, from zero to 1500, he can be your spiritual father. But if you want to get to 3000, 4000, 5000, you basically have to get away from that father and to go to another father. So now you got to have a Stephen Furtick. Now you got to have a TD Jakes. Now you got to have somebody bigger than where your bishop is so you can grow to the next level because apparently your bishop can't take you there anymore. So what they do, it's like they divorce their spiritual father and they just jump to another one and find another one. That's what they do. So and so, are you seeing how this network is happening? Are you seeing how these pastors are grooming? They're being made, they're being developed, they're networking so they can become the next level of whatever. And, when, and I say whatever because this, this next level isn't necessarily a level of anointing. Or spirituality, even though they'll say that. They'll say, church, you know, we used to have a church of 2,000. Now we have a church of 5,000. Look at how the Lord has favored us. Look at how, how the Lord has anointed us. Oh my God, your bishop, your pastor must be so anointed. Because look how many people he's running. Okay? It's not necessarily favor or anointing, guys. It could be they know how to play the game. They know how to play the networking game. And what they did is they divorced their spiritual father, if you will, and they just got another father who's more famous and more bigger and more prestige and social clout as their past uh, spiritual father. So what they did is they just jumped ship and went to the next spiritual father who's more famous and more bigger and has a bigger name and bigger clout. So it's not necessarily anointing or favor. It's just you just jumped ship and got what a, got what a bigger name. But it's all disguised in the favor in the anointing of God. So you have so many people in the pews just buying off on this. Oh, my pastor is so anointed. Oh, my bishop is so this. Oh, my bishop is so that. No, he just got another spiritual father who was bigger. So then he can go to a 2,000 church to a 5,000 church. Anyway, so they come out of the elephant room. And now all of a sudden, Stephen Furtick is now propping T.D. Jakes before the people saying, look, this is now my basically my new spiritual father. This is now my new daddy. Look at Bishop T.D. Jakes. And now T.D. Jakes is getting interviewed by Stephen Furtick. That's the first thing. The second thing I saw, and this is way before Michael Todd, you know, spit that spit on somebody. I guess it was his brother's face in the middle of pandemic. Before he even did that, this disgusting mess. I knew Michael Todd, and I prayed for Michael Todd because, again, since I came out of the prosperity gospel movement, since I know how this networking network happens, since I since I know how this this is how it goes down, I saw the same stuff with Michael Todd, and I was like, if he doesn't repent, if he doesn't change his ways, he's going to go down the same road as all these other prosperity gospel guys. About five years ago, I knew Michael Todd was 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 going down a wrong road. Because what this is this is before he got big and before he really started to blow up. He preached in front of his church and he said, and he played the tape of Stephen Furtick calling him. And basically Stephen Furtick said, Hey, you know, Michael Todd, I, I see what you're doing down there in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I see what you're doing. I basically I see you guys, you're doing great things, and I just want to encourage you, man of God, just to let you know that I see you. And Michael Todd was like, oh my God, see everybody? Stephen Furtick called us. Stephen Furtick knows who we are. Are you all seeing this, guys? Praise God. Saints, a couple things there. Number one, who cares if Stephen Furtick or T.D. Jakes or any of these people know you? The only person you got to be worried about knowing you is Jesus. Okay? Am I in the in crowd with Christ? Does Christ know me? He's the only person you got to be concerned about as far as knowing me. Why? Because at the end of the day, there's only, and I said this in another video, the only rock star celebrity in the church is Christ. The only rock star, the only celebrity, the only person we need to be making famous is Christ. Not ourselves, and not other ministries. The only person who's famous, the only rock star, the only celebrity in church is Jesus the Christ. If it's not that, then you're going down the wrong road and you're going to be in trouble. Okay. So when Michael Todd said that, oh, Stephen Furtick knows us, I was like, wow, we need, to, we need to pray for Michael Todd because if not, 
He's going to go down that same road of famousness. He's going to go down that same road as popularity. He's going to go down that same road as far as networking and networking with these big name people so he can become a big name himself. He's going to go down that same road of being made and being groomed into the next big thing. And it's all going to be about fame. It's all going to be about making a name for yourself. It's all going to be about notoriety. It's all going to be about all that stuff that the prosperity gospel word of faith people have been doing for years. Okay. And oh, by the way, just a little background on T.D. Jakes. And I know this because T.D. Jakes had said this. T.D. Jakes said how he got big. Um, he was preaching at a Azusa Street revival for Bishop uh, Carlton Pearson. Apparently, Bishop Carlton Pearson invited him to an Azusa Street revival. And while he was preaching, T.D. Jakes was preaching, the founder at the time of TBN, Paul Kraut Sr., was either sick or in a hospital or whatever. So he was watching T.D. Jakes preach at the Azusa Street Conference. And as he was in the hospital bed sick or whatever... Paul Kraut Sr. saw Bishop T.D. Jakes and said, hey, I want that guy. And from there, a star is born, if you will. Okay? So these are just, you know, network networking opportunities. And, and I can say that because just Bishop Jakes said that, you know, publicly at the Potter's House. So this is common knowledge of how he kind of blew up, if you will. And, and that that is why when... When Bishop Jakes, when he did his mega fest conferences in Atlanta, when they rented out the Atlanta Falcons stadium, that is why so many people wanted to get on that docket. They wanted to get on Bishop T.D. Jakes's docket. Why? Because if you can get your face out there, if you can get your message out there, if you can get your name out there, you can blow up and become the next big thing. Okay? That's one of the, that's one of the ways that we need to bind him blew up is she preached um, at one of Bishop Jakes's conference, when she, when, and she preached at a singles conference, and that's when she preached no more sheets. She preached no more sheets at a Bishop uh, T.D. Jakes conference, and through no more sheets, she blew up. Same thing with uh, Pastor Jamal Bryant. He preached for Bishop T.D. Jakes at one of his conferences, and then Pastor Jamal Bryant blew up. Okay, That is how a star is born. That is how the grooming and the networking and, and all that happens. And then they will say, this is the favor of the Lord, and this is the anointing of the Lord. And I question that. Is that the favor of the Lord, or is that just you playing the game and knowing the networking so you can make a name for yourself? And what did God tell Abraham? God told Abraham, I will make your name great. Okay? So you don't have to make your name great yourself, church. And, no, and number two, there's only one name you got to be making great in, in the first place, and that's Christ. And lastly, you can have a great name, but nobody knows who you are. Meaning, having a great name doesn't necessarily mean that you got to be famous. Some of the greatest Christians in church history are saints, people you don't even know about. But they have a great name before God. They have a great name under heaven, and that's the only thing we need to know. Again, is God pleased with me? And as long as Jesus was pleased with me, it really doesn't matter if the world can't stand me. And oh, by the way, that's how they're supposed to be anyway. Jesus said they hated Jesus. Jesus said they hated me, so they will hate you. That is a promise from Christ himself. So we're not going to have friends and everybody in around the world. That's not the way it's supposed to work. Jesus said the world hated me, so the world is going to hate you too, disciples. So if everybody's liking us, saints, there's something wrong. Okay? With that, so with that being said, I knew Michael Todd was going down the wrong road five years ago. I knew Stephen Furtick was going down the wrong road a while back when he when he invited T.D. Jakes in and said, this is basically my new father. I'm like, here you go again. You know, you you left one man of God to go to another one. You're just trying to, bit, this is something you'll see. This is something you'll hear. They'll say that, you know, I'm, I'm leaving one pastor to go to another pastor because I need to get the mantle from somebody higher than me. Anytime you hear the words, you know, I have to have their mantle, what they're really saying is, I need to make my brand bigger. They're saying, I need to build my brand. I need to make my brand bigger. So I need to, I need to divorce my father, get a bigger father than my bishop is, so my, I can make my brand bigger. But they'll, they'll spiritualize it and say, no, I need, a, I need a person who has a higher mantle than the one I have now. And oh, by the way, anytime you hear that word mantle, saints, that is an Old Testament way of looking at it. That is the whole, you know, 
Elijah and Elisha, when Elisha said, if you leave me, give me a double portion of your spirit. And Elijah said, well, if you see me when I'm taken up, then may it be unto you and you'll get a double portion of what I had. Elisha did see it and Elijah, Elisha did get a double portion. The problem is, is these prosperity gospel preachers, these word of faith preachers. Now, I don't know if they're still doing this, but back in the late 90s, early 2000s, this is how they did. They would use that Elijah and Elisha relationship as to prove this is how it happens today. Saints, no, it doesn't. The Bible says in Acts that the Holy Spirit will become, a, it'll, he'll dwell in all flesh. So you don't have the Holy Spirit just dwelling on certain individuals. And the only way you get hooked up is if you get the mantle of the prophet. Saints, that is an Old Testament paradigm. The Holy Spirit does not operate like that in the New Testament now. So when these prophets and teachers would, would preach and teach that, yes, they are preaching and teaching from the Bible, but they're preaching Old Testament way of doing it. The Holy Spirit doesn't operate like that anymore. In the New Testament, he'll pour upon his spirit upon all flesh. So if I want to get hooked up with the Holy Spirit, I got to get hooked up with the Holy Spirit. I don't get hooked up with a pastor or some certain bishop. Again, that is an Old Testament paradigm. It is not a New Testament paradigm. So we're operating under the wrong covenant, okay? And that's how they trick people because they're like, look, see, it says this in the Bible, saints. And I'm like, yes, it does say that in the Bible, but it's Old Testament. It's not New Testament. It's not New Covenant. The Holy Spirit is a, a poured upon all flesh now, not just certain famous specific individuals. Wrong way of doing it. The Holy Spirit does not operate like that, Okay. So with that being said, you can kind of see it now. You see how Stephen Furtick is getting rose up. You see how Michael Todd is getting rose up. I'll, I'll throw out another name. Um, Todd White. Um, Todd White, you know, he basically propped up uh, Kenneth Copeland, especially saying how, you know, Kenneth Copeland has been such a father in the faith to him. He's been such a mentor to him. So Todd White is kind of taking over that, you know, Kenneth Copeland thing. You know, because as Kenneth Copeland is getting older now, Kenneth Copeland is now in his 80s. And a lot of his friends like Jesse Duplantis and Jerry Seville and Bill Winston and Dr. Leroy Thompson and his spiritual son, Creflo Dollar, they're all getting older. Mike Murdoch's getting older. Okay, Benny Hinn. Remember when Benny Hinn said that, you know, I think it's an offense to give $1,000 to the Lord. And, you know, he kind of acted like he repented of what he was saying. When that happened, I, I said to myself, you know what, he's doing that. Because Billy Graham just died. Go back and watch that. Go back and watch the timing of that, Saints. When 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 Benny Hinn said, I think it's an offense to give $1,000 to the Lord, and he basically said a lot of his prosperity gospel stuff was gotten out of whack. But he also said, though, that a lot of that prosperity gospel stuff he taught, he said he taught that because he was taught that. Again, see, that's that generation of covenant that just keeps being passed down, passed down, passed down, passed down. So Benny Hinn just kept regurgitating what he was being fed. Okay, and I'm like, he's, he's, he's saying that now because Billy Graham just died. I can almost guarantee it. He's saying that because Billy Graham just died and he knows he doesn't have a whole lot of time left. And sure enough, he got up on TV and with his white suit that he wears or whatever it was. And he said, you know, when I get to heaven, I don't want to be rebuked. That's what he said. And I'm like, aha, he's saying that because Billy Graham just died. He knows he doesn't have a whole lot of time left. So you can kind of see these new generation of preachers. They're being groomed. Stephen Verdick, Michael Todd. And now with that being said, pray for Stephen Verdick. Pray for Michael Todd. I pray these guys repent and they stop playing the, the famous popularity networking game and just listen to the Spirit and, and be led of the Lord. With that being said, from the female, female side of it, I'm kind of wondering... You know, not that I'm going to go out heresy hunting for these ladies, because I'm not. But as, like, Joyce Meyer's getting older, and Paula White's getting older, and Winita Bynum's getting older, I'm wondering who the next generation of female preachers is going to be. Um, as they're getting older now, because I think Winita Bynum is in her late 60s, I think Joyce Meyer now is in her 70s, and I don't know how, how old Paula White is, but she may be almost 60 now. I wonder, so as they're kind of getting older, who's the next generation of female prosperity gospel word of faith people going to be either going to rise up or should I say that they're going to groom 
And they're going to help mold and shape and make into the next generation of female preachers. Again, not that I'm going to go out heresy hunting, but just as a personal interest of mine, I wonder who the next generation of female preachers are going to try to be or who they're going to groom and make to try to be. You know, this is my spiritual daughter. Look at her now. This is my spiritual son. Look at him now. Saints, that's how they do it. They're groomed. They're made. They're prepped. They're primed to be the next big thing. That, that's how they do it. And you can see it as they start preaching from circuit or conference to conference to conference to circuit to circuit to circuit. That's how they get their face out there. That's how they get their voice out there. That's how they get their name out there. They get, they get in front of the people and, they, they, and then they blow up and they become the next big thing. And then before you know it, they're driving you know, $300,000 know, Mercedes or Lamborghinis and they got their own private jets and all that garbage. It's just, that's how it's done. And they do it all in the name of God is blessing me. Saints, I've, I've been in some of those circles. They were, they were grooming me. Now, I was at the very, very beginning, early, early stages of it. But some of these people were like years and years and years into it. If you listen to any of Costi Hinn's stuff, who's Benny Hinn's nephew, listen to Costi Hinn. Got some great stuff out there. He can give you behind the scenes stuff of what happened. And these people are groomed and they're made. These people are not just developed in a vacuum, okay? They, are, they don't just show up out of nowhere. They're groomed, they're primed, they're prepped, they're made, okay? So again, we're talking about how are false teachers made and, 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 and groomed, but also the next generation of prosperity preachers. Just as a personal interest, I'm, I'm, we kind of see Todd White now. We, we see Michael Todd now. We see Stephen Furtick now. But now I'm, I'm kind of wondering who the ladies are going to be. So, again, not that I'm going to a heresy hunt, but just as a personal interest, I'm wondering who that's going to be. Anyway, saints, I want to stop there. If this has blessed you at all, would you please, you know, consider making a financial donation to Walking Through the Scriptures with Joseph Hoda? Check out my YouTube channel. I, under, under my About, I have my Cash App if you want to give Cash App. I also have my PayPal link if you want to give me a PayPal. Also, please feel free to check out my website, Walking Through the Scriptures with JosephAhoda.com. Yes, I know it's extremely lengthy, but check it out. You'll see some more pictures of me, my family. You get to know me a little bit more, my military history and stuff like that. So again, please feel free to check that out. I have links in the about where you can check that out. Until next time, God bless. And always be discerning. Always be looking out for this. Until next time, God bless.